Okay, so KP. This is a new topic within the specification, and it's been confirmed on the advanced specification for 2022. So I expect it to be on this paper, as well as the following paper. So it's always handy to know how to do these calculations. Juicy six marks up for grabs here. So as always, this is an interactive video. I want you to attempt the question yourself to see where you go wrong, learn upon your mistakes. As always, practice makes perfect in chemistry. This is from an AQA pass paper, um, but the, the premise still applies to all other examples. I can do other example pass paper questions separately, but for now, this is AQA, let's go. So let's start with just reading the question. A different mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen was allowed to reach equilibrium at 600 Kelvin. Um, the fact that it's a different mixture is unimportant. Now, the thing that is important is our reaction. So this was added in the previous question. So let me just add that in here. So we've got our carbon monoxide gas with our hydrogen gas and chuck two moles in front of that. And this is at equilibrium uh, with methanol production. So perfect. So this is our reaction scheme here. We're going to be using this a little bit later. At equilibrium, the mixture contained 2.76 mole of carbon monoxide, 4.51 mole of hydrogen, and 0.36 moles of methanol. We've got a total pressure here of 630 kilopascal. Where a total pressure is signified with a big capital P right here. We have to calculate the value for the equilibrium constant Kp for this reaction at 600 Kelvin. So this, I believe, was from 2017. So they're being quite kind to us here. Um, I expect things around this sort of calculation to actually get a, a bit more complicated. So do your best to learn it in and out. So I'll actually make a note of the total pressure here. P equals 630 kilopascals. All right, perfect. So there's two equations that you need to be aware of. Um, I advise all my students to remember is just the mole fraction equation and the partial pressure equation. You can remember them in different ways if you want, whichever works best for you, but I find this one is the easiest by far to remember. So lambda then, that's our mole fraction, equals, it's going to be the moles of the substance we're looking for, one of the gases, divided by the total moles of gas. Um, that would be the first equation. The second equation is going to be our partial pressures, our lowercase p, equals our lambda, our mole fraction. Let's go back, that's like a little walking giraffe. Lambda times our big P, our total pressure. So how does this help us? So if we remember these two equations, we can rearrange them as needed and then fill them and feed them in to the KP expression, which is exactly the next thing I'm going to do. So we'd actually get a mark for the KP expression. So let's draw this out. So we'd have our KP equals, now very similar to KC, we're going to be having our products on the top of the fraction divided by our reactants. Now, very important to get uh, to not get confused here between Kp and Kc. So, first off, we're going to be having our partial pressure, uh, lowercase p here, of our product of methanol. And this is going to be divided by our reactants, which is our partial pressure of carbon monoxide, multiplied by our partial pressure of hydrogen gas. Now remember, moles are very important here. We have to stick the mole to be the power of the bracket. Now make sure this you don't get real confused and muddle up and put them in square brackets because this signifies concentration. That would be a big fat zero, okay? Don't do that. So as long as you make sure they're in square in rounded brackets, you can put the P outside. You can use a double lowercase P for partial pressure. It's really up to you. This is the way that I like to do it, the way I learned it. Now, so this is our KP expression. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually add up all of our moles in order to get our total moles, which would be this right here. So then we're going to be having our moles. And let's write this out, total moles or even better, so the examiner can understand what we're doing, total moles of gas equals, this is going to be our moles of carbon monoxide, so 2.76, plus our moles of hydrogen, 4.51, plus our moles of 
methanol 0.360. Don't get confused here and try and multiply this guy by two. Um, this, remember, is all to do with the molar ratios. The molar coefficients are to do with the molar ratios, not the actual amount of the substance. That's been given to us in the question. So don't get carried away and times this by two. So if we add that all up in our calculator, it's going to give us a total of 7.63 mole. So speed things up here, six marker question, time is crucial. What I'm going to do is because in order to calculate the partial pressure of something here, we need our lambda, our mole fraction, and we need our total pressure. We have the total pressure right here given to us in the question. So what we need is our mole fraction of each gas. So let's just write that here. So first off, we're going to have, be having our mole fraction, mole fraction, mole fraction. And then in brackets, we're going to be signifying which one we're looking at. So carbon monoxide followed by hydrogen followed by methanol. And if we do it this way, it's just going to speed things up for us. So we'd have our 2.76 divided by our total, which is 7.63. So you can go straight ahead and do the exact same thing here. 4.51 divided by 7.63. Um, and this is going to be 0 0.36 divided by 7.63. Now what I'm going to do is do them all at once. As I said, it's going to save us some time. So if you put that in your calculator, you should get 0 0.3617, 0 0.5911, and 0 0.04718. So now we have our lambda we have this now, so we can just put the variables in in order to get our partial pressures, which is ultimately what we want in order to put them into our KP expression to get our KP, which is what we're looking for. So let's do that right now. So our partial pressure, again, I'm going to do all three in the same step so we can save ourselves some important time. So partial pressure of carbon monoxide, partial pressure of hydrogen gas, and partial pressure of the uh, methanol is going to be, using our equation from before, our mole fraction times our total uh, pressure here. So let's do that as, let's change the color, go to a nice blue. It's going to be our 0 0.3617 right here, our lambda times our total pressure, which is 630. Easy piece. So we're going to do the same thing for all of those. 0 0.5911 times 630. And then our last one, 0 0.04718 times 630. Easy as that. So if we do that in our calculator back to back, this is going to give us 227.871, 372.393, and 29.7. Seven, two, three. Okay, so what do you think we do next? All we have to do is just put these values into our KP expression. So what I'm going to do, let's change to a red, and let's run out of space here, aren't we? Uh, KP equals, I'm going to have a partial pressure of methanol, which is simply 29.723, chuck that in brackets, over our partial pressure of, uh, what's next, carbon monoxide, so that'll be 227, 227.871, and then also our hydrogen gas, 372.393. Remember, very important, we have to square it. Right, perfect. So that gives us a total answer of 9.41 times 10, to the minus seven. So remember, we can put that in our box right here. So you can chuck that in our answer box, 9.41 times 10 to the minus seven. Next things next is units. Now, if you're not too, too good with calculating units, it's actually not very difficult at all. All you have to do is put the units on the top of the fraction and the units on the bottom of the fraction, cancel the ones that match, and then reverse the sign of the powers if needed. For example, this one is going to be our kilopascal pressures over, so we have one lots of kilopascal pressure here, times one, two, three lots on the bottom. So if I draw that out here, kilopascal, 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 
we can cancel the two out that are the same. And then if we times these two together, that's going to give us kilopascal squared. But because it's on the bottom of the fraction, we have to do one over it. So this is going to have a minus chucked in front of it here. So that's just going to become kilopascal to the minus two. So then, looking at the mark scheme, where do our marks come from? So first off, we got a mark for the KP expression. The next mark is for our total moles, which is the 7.63. Next is going to be all of our partial pressures of our individual gases here. So um, this would be two marks collectively for all of these partial pressures. Now they skipped out the stage of working out the mole fractions. I assume this would be one mark and this would be two, but they just left it out of the mark scheme. So this here is two marks. And then filling in our values and inputting them into the KP expression is our fifth mark. And then our units here is our sixth mark. Alternatively, if you wanted, you can convert this into Pascals for whatever reason, if you feel like you really want to do that. And then you could put your final units in Pascal to the minus two and just times everything by a factor of a thousand. So yeah, that's KP in a nutshell. As long as you remember these two equations, equation one and equation two, and be able to rearrange them, you should be all good to go for these sorts of calculations. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Any topic suggestions or things you're really struggling with. As I said before, this is definitely going to come up on the 2022 exam. So make sure you know it inside and out and also for future year exams too. All right, best of luck. Peace.